Alrighty then, this uh, video is a response to uh, one of my viewers, and thanks to all 10 of you <laughs> uh, who wanted to know how to set up his Pimax headset a little bit better. Now, I've been uh, using an 8KX for six or seven months now, and it's been fantastic. I have had to go to tech support a couple of times uh, with some minor issues that got sorted with the software and hardware, but Pimax tech support, whatever else people may say about them, is awesome. They get back to you within 24 hours. They'll even work with you live on your own computer. They're really, uh, really remarkable. I mean, sometimes sometimes it's you get frustrated when you're trying to get a new piece of technology working. And when we're trying to get cutting-edge software in games working alongside a cutting-edge headset like the 8KX, you know, there are going to be some stumbles. What I've always found interesting is that the same guys that complain about how much setup there is with a Pimax 8KX to get a good visual uh, play situation will spend hours, if not days, setting up individual profiles for each airplane in DCS. You know, I mean, DCS takes a lot more setup than the Pimax does. Anyway, let's get right to it. Uh, let's just assume that we've got the Pimax. Oh, well, I do, of course, but let's assume you've got your Pimax set up. And we'll take a look at the Pimax Pi Tools. This is as big as it gets on the screen, but you'll see there's several, several possibilities. General, which tells us the version we've got. And I have the latest version. And the headset firmware. Again, no updates available, so I've got the latest. Uh, I get the uh, Pi, Pi Tools to hide to the uh, taskbar when I close the button. I don't run it at setup. Um, and I don't use uh, the Pimax uh, experience. A lot of people do, and they find it quite a bit easier. But I've been using Pi Tools all the way along, so this is what I use. Okay, so let's go to status. That shows that my headset is working. You can see the green light on the headset, and both my base stations are working. I don't have controllers. And I, I don't know what those trackers are, but my, my base stations track me. Uh, from here we can start Steam VR, but we won't do that yet. You can set up your room, and you set it up just like you would for any other headset or in or in uh, Steam for Steam VR, and uh, pair it with another device, or you can restart the uh, the headset service and reboot the headset if you have a problem. All right. Next we go to settings. In settings, we've already checked that we have the right version. So let's go to the headset, HMD, and see how we're set up there. Well, I want to use native mode. Native mode isn't quite as fast, but it gives us full resolution, full access to the 4K capabilities of both of the lenses. If you use upscaling, I think you can get to 112 hertz, which is a little bit faster. Uh, but unless you have a, a computer that's really grinding to get to... Uh, to get to the performance level required by the headset, I wouldn't use upscale. Uh, you have several options. You can use 90 hertz, 75 hertz, or 60 hertz. Next, uh, you check for backlighting. I like that pretty bright. Again, if you've got the Pimax experience, you can set the colors and the brightness very easily in that. But other people have done videos on that, and I don't know it as well as they do. IPD offset. Well, I have fairly low IPD. My eyes are close together, which my mother always said made people look untrustworthy. And then she'd look at me very carefully. I, anyway, I'm pretty sure she liked me, but uh, that was mom for you. Uh, I have it set with the right eye at 1.1 and left at zero. But I have found that you can actually adapt. You want to adjust your IPD in the headset as close to your setting as you can. My setting would be, <clears throat> sorry, around 58 or 60, according to the measurement of my eyes, pupil to pupil. But uh, in the IPD of the Pimax, the lowest I can go is about 61. I find that's actually pretty close. And then I just use 1.1 for my right eye. I don't mess with the vertical offset. I haven't noticed that it really helps me much. There is no motion compensation. So that's my settings for that. Uh, and yours may vary slightly, but that's basically how you do it. You have a slider, and you can set your IPD in, in tenths of a, tenths of a uh, well, I don't know what one would signify. I guess tenths of a millimeter? I'm not sure. Now, let's go to games, 
Now I've got a bunch of games installed already, but if you don't, here's what you do. You click Import, and then you go to your files, and we can install one that I just got the other day. Uh, let's go to Local Disk. It's a Steam game, so I've got to go to Program Files, then I have to go to Steam, and then I go to Steam Apps. Where did I see Steam Apps? Here we are. And then to Common Files, and then to, uh, let's see. Oh, I get Glider Sim. That's what I want. So I open up Glider Sim and I go to Data. No, I don't. Sorry. I was thinking of something else. But I go to this screen and then I just select Glider Sim Executable. All right. And that will install it. Import success. Beautiful. All right. So. Again, what I did was I went to C, the C drive, uh, I went to programs, x86 programs, I went to Steam, Steam apps, common, and then the name of the sim, and then the executable for it, and brought it in here. All right. Now let's go back to settings and go to games. And here's where we can set up the game itself. And it should show up here as glider. So oh, I guess I've already got it in. Maybe I've got it in twice. Okay, so here I'm using a large field of view. I don't recommend that to start with. Um, let's see what your headset can do and how comfortable you are. So we'll go to normal. And you can render quality. You can set the render quality quite high if you want. I mean, um, you will find, however, that unless the game is extremely high resolution, it won't make a big difference between 1.25 and 2.0. So I usually set it around 1.5. Fixed foveated rendering, uh, what that does is focus processing power on the part of the screen that is in the center of your eye, wherever you move your head. And then it makes sure that that's rendered to its ultimate degree. And everything else on the periphery uh, will be rendered less aggressively so that you uh, you get uh, a good frame rate and still have absolute clarity where you're looking. For most of the games I play, I find it's not necessary. Uh, I can still get 50, 60 frames per second in IL2, which is the game I probably play more than anything else without using it, so I don't. Do you need to be compatible with parallel projections? Well, not for this game, but if we're using Microsoft Flight Simulator, absolutely. The guys at Asobo did a crappy job on preparing the simulator for uh, for VR headsets that aren't uh, the Reverb G2 or a Microsoft uh, setup using OpenXR. They built the game on OpenXR and uh, Pimax runs with OpenVR in Steam VR. Turn on smart smoothing. Well, you might do that later. If you find you're only getting 30 frames per second uh, but you've got your uh, refresh rate at 60, you can turn on smart smoothing, and as long as you're getting 30, the the soft smart smart smoothing, <laughs> the smart soothing software will interpolate extra frames, and and uh, speed things up so that you get a nice smooth 60 frames per second, even though your game's actually running at maybe 35. Okay, so now we go down a little bit. You can choose your colors. You can choose the contrast um, and brightness of the game. You might find it'll vary from game to game, so you can set this for every game, or you can kind of have a generic setting that you use. And I am happy with these settings, so I will click Apply, and I will click Save. All right, now we can minimize this, and we'll go to Steam. Now, I like to go right to the Steam app itself, because then I can go to the app that I want to start. And here's a cool little app called FPS which actually gives you a running count of your frames per second and how hard your GPU and CPU are working and how much uh, memory they're using. So I would launch that, right? And then I would probably want to launch my game. So let's go to IL-2 Sturmovic Battle of Stalingrad and I'll start that in VR. And as soon as it comes up, I'll show you a trick. <laughs> okay, so there's our VR view on the screen. I'm not actually using my headset right now. 
uh, because I want to make this, this isn't about the VR play of Sturmovic. This is about setting, setting everything up to run it. He said, stumbling around all over the place. Ad-libbing it, friends. That's Latin for fall on your face, face in front of large groups of people. Or in my case, fall on your face in front of small groups of people. <laughs> it's all right. Now, down here at the bottom, you can see that Steam VR's on. And uh, if I right-click that, or left-click it, rather, I get a little window over here. I can move that wherever I want. Uh, wherever I want, he said, trying to speak clearly. Now let's right-click on that. And you can see all the way down here, we can choose to display the VR view. That's good if you're recording in video, but I haven't figured out how to use that properly in IL2. The settings we want to look at right now are under the heading Settings. Isn't that convenient? All right, so here they are. We can move these over. Let's have a look. In general, resolution per eye, 100% resolution for the Pimax. You'd think it would be 3840 by 2160, which is the resolution per eye, but it isn't. They they basically have to uh, um, increase it to allow for distortion in the lenses and in the software translation between the lenses and your eye in Steam. So they make it quite a bit bigger, right? So 100% is actually this number, not 3840 by 2160. If you have to, if, if the game gets slow, you can turn that down. But start here at 100%. Now let's go to video and we'll select per application video setting here. We want to set it for IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. I've got motion smoothing turned off because I don't need it. I have my custom resolution multiplier, which is Steam VR, set at 100%. Field of view is, I, I'm not sure what that is. So uh, other than the field of view of the headset, I don't really know what that means in terms of Steam. So if I don't understand something, I tend not to mess with it. It's the same with world scale. Some people uh, change that, but I, I don't really understand what it does yet, so I don't uh, have much to do with it. So now I'm set to go, right? And at this point, it would actually, I'll stop, uh, I'll stop the Battle of Stalingrad because I only, I only started it to get Steam VR going, right? Now, once we've stopped it, the next time we start it, it'll use the new Steam VR settings. So we start it again. We launch in VR. And of course, you don't have to go through all that rigmarole to get to the, uh, the Steam VR settings. You can just open up Steam VR and then left click on the uh, button in your taskbar and right click on the screen that comes up and choose settings. I thought I'd show you the long way so you can see how it works. Okay. So now we'd be ready to play IL-2 Sturmovic. And in my settings, with my i9900 and my uh, 32 gigs of memory and uh, my uh, NVIDIA 3090, I get around 50, 60 frames per second with settings set fairly high. All right, I hope that helps you out. I'm going to try and write up a, a little script uh, or instruction file that I'll post alongside this video. If you have comments, ideas on how to do things better, on uh, things that would uh, improve our gaming experience, mine included, uh, please put them in the comments. And if you like the video, maybe subscribe. It would be nice to have, oh, I don't know, dare I dream, 30 or 40 subscribers? <laughs> I don't know if I have that many relatives. Anyway, uh, I hope this video has been helpful, and thank you for watching.